let's get straight into talking about Gil McLaughlin. Um, I worked very closely with him and had many a battle with him over the journey. I found that the great thing about Gil was he was a consensus person. He was certainly wasn't a pushover at any stage, but would listen to people and would actually canvas opinions from people that he felt had something to add and would take it into consideration. I think that was probably one of his greatest strengths. And if the benchmark is, is it better, the AFL, from when he took over from Andrew Dimitriou when it was in rude health, I think the answer, from my point of view, is a resounding yes. Yeah, you're right, Eddie. He was a consensus person. Um, that was his strength occasionally. It was his weakness, in my view. He'll leave a massive hole. I mean, we saw from that opening clip how much he's going to miss the game. The game is going to miss him. As I said, leaving a massive hole. But it, it's highly unusual, Ross, to go out this way, um, not to have a successor, as Andrew Dimitriou did, as Wayne Jackson did before Andrew Dimitriou. And that's one area that Gillen hasn't succeeded. There's no obvious person within the organisation. There are three names the AFL are throwing up. Um, realistically, I think the two most key candidates within the AFL are Andrew Dillon and Travis Ord. Kylie Rogers is there too. But um, I honestly believe, and there they are there, I honestly believe that the majority of the clubs do not think one of those three individuals should be running the AFL. Here are the contenders from Clubland. Brendan Gale, hot favourite. Kylie Watson Wheeler, president of the Western Bulldogs. Christine Holgate, formerly at Collingwood. Tells for a boss. Still at Collingwood. Sorry, yep. still on the Collingwood board, Ed. I'm sorry, so many have gone, I get confused. <laughs> um, Stuart Fox, obviously highly rated executive at Geelong, CEO at Hawthorne over the flags and now running the MCC. Now, Carol, let, let, let me throw a, a couple Just a little of... outsider. Tom Harley, probably not quite there mm. yet, but if clubs are nominating anyone who might be right in a few years, it's Tom Harley. So, for me, uh, let's put the last uh, graphic back up, if we could, uh, gang, there. And uh, so you've got Patrick Delaney there. Now, a Sydney guy down to his bootstrap but is the head of Foxtel. Now, Patrick Delaney is one of those guys who comes in and that's a big appointment if he was in to do it. Tim Joyce, as so many people would know, he's the head of Asia Pacific uh, at uh, Macquarie Bank Capital, 47 years of age. If you wanted to go the Ross Oakley route and bring somebody in who would be completely different, now, he was, uh, I'd lined to Tim to be a possible successor to me at Collingwood. Forget that he's a Collingwood bloke, but he hasn't been in football but has been close to it. Sam Mostyn's a former AFL commissioner and has done great things, particularly for women in business out of Sydney. But I Realistically, think. Realistically, they're probably all outsiders. Before we move on, I did yeah. two interviews after we broke the story on the Age website yesterday about Gillen. One with Tony Jones on AW, then another one this morning with Carl Stefanovic, Stefanovic on the Today Show. Mm. They both asked me about you. You were the first one they asked about unprompted. Is there any chance you would even consider putting your hat into the ring? I'll be putting in my submission to the headhunters tomorrow. <laughs> no, I won't be. <laughs> I thought I'd get you excited for him. No. I told uh, Carl you were far too busy hosting Footy uh, Classified. Exactly. No, look, it's, it, look, I haven't even thought about it because it's not something that's ever been on my radar and uh, I, I'll just say no now. Hey, Caro, no. you just said there Brennan Gale is the favourite. Uh, Certainly the favourite from, among the club amongst presidents, the club presidents and CEOs. But not, you, not interstate, yeah. I'm hearing yeah. uh, late today, Caro. Just uh, literally in the last half hour, uh, I had uh, a uh, interstate uh, uh, president say to me, don't be talking up Brennan Gale too much because the non-Victorian clubs aren't a great fan. Why? Now, for me, I don't you're know. Not, but, you're not, you're but, not talking to the states, then I'm talking to it. All right, well, I'm talking to states, so certainly there are, there's always going to be presidents. Can I just yeah. say this? For, for Brennan Gale, uh, you know, when I look at it and go, former player, there's no former player on the commission at the moment or in the senior executive ranks other than Brad Scott, but just leave that to the side, up to be the CEO. He was in charge of the AFLPA. For me, the biggest things going forward is going to be concussion, player health and welfare, Tasmania, the impact on lists. He ticks a lot of those things off. Andrew Dillon has been there since 2000, and we'll hear from Adam Silver, the regarded as the best sports administrator in the world at the NBA in America in a moment on their succession planning. But he's been there from 2000. He's big on all these things as well. I think that once Gil, if he closes the deal on the TV rights and these other things, I think we have to get back to having somebody who understands football. We have to get grassroots going again. There's going to be a, a massive drama with the women's and the men's. And if we bring in another team, I'm just really conscious that we are really thinning out. Mick Modas will talk to yeah. that a little well, bit later on. Brendan's achievements at Richmond yeah. have to have to be they have to acknowledge. It. He's impeccable. Turned, a, a, he's, turned a, an almost crippled club into a powerhouse. Played 200 games. Has seen the transformation of a club and yeah. a struggling club. 
but everyone you speak to, and when he speaks, his ability to, not unlike mm. Gillen, his ability to collaborate and recognise, well, that's not my strength. I'll bring in the experts, I'll listen to them, and I'll empower and them. He and, has go. Spread, and I think spread he could the do that yeah. if he's commercial acumen, if you could appoint him and keep Andrew Dillon, and then mm. I think you get the best of both worlds. It's funny oh. that none of our lists include Travis Old, the SNL oh, CEO, yeah. who a few years ago was being earmarked by Gillen as the club nominee. Well, the for cynic him. in me, Caro, says that for all the names we throw up and for all the outsiders, it will yep. come from. Andrew Dillon or Travis Old. Do, do you believe that? No, I don't. You don't? I, I, I'm not saying it won't, yeah. but I think you have to look at some other names well, could too. Could it take interim an Andrew Dillon for a period and then no. bring along Kylie Rogers? No, no, no. They've the got to get in. Whoever's in's got to be in yeah. there and, and go hard. This I, is, I think the other problem with The world's with changing too quickly in these well, Just before we move Who on... Who has the most influence on the appointment? That's what I'm interested in. We're all throwing well, it's around. The, the interstate president. The AFL commission. Is it the commission? Yeah, but the, the, the clubs will have to say. Yeah. But uh, it'll come down to the AFL commission. Ultimately. But what I think really has to happen, I think this is an opportunity because you had, as I said, Andrew Demetri did a fantastic job. Handed over to Gill. OK, had Gill there. Wayne Jackson brought Gill in as a young man and had him there sitting in his office all the way through. He had been anointed a long way out, and I'll get to Adam Silver in a moment. But for me, this is the opportunity, because I think there's holes in the administration at the AFL going forward. Not a knock. But it's just the world... Just plan. let me... No, we'll, we'll get to that. Gillen's but, tried, but it just hasn't really worked out. The massive the, holes in the commission, Ed. That's he, one of the problems. That's what I'm getting to. If you pick somebody like, let's say, it's out of Andrew Dillon, who understands the AFL, understands football, but maybe hasn't got, to, you know, hasn't got the showbiz of, of say, Gill in the first instance. Now, we can develop that, but we don't necessarily need to have somebody doing that. <laughs> but you need uh, to put some people... I'm an Andrew up. Dillon fan, but I, I mean, he's not showbiz. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But, but that's part of the job. If you've got a, a former footballer like a, a, a Brennan Gale, then you've got, you've got to fashion the commission around it now. They're not different uh, places. They, you need to, there needs to be more football people on the AFL commission and or at the executive level. Now, if you went and got somebody like a Tim Joyce, then you've got somebody who's a hard businessman, understands all that. You need to get people up into the commission who can understand the fabric of the game a little bit more, although he, he, he does get the footy side of it. We've got to use the whole lot at the moment. They're not different private Idaho. I, I think what's happened, Matthew, is that Gillan McLaughlin, very charismatic. Mm. Dimitriou, very mm. charismatic, you know, loud, brash. No, not, Gillan isn't loud and brash, but, you know, they're both... <laughs> and Brendan Gale is a charismatic mm. person too. So does the next CEO have to be charismatic? Well, well, I, I think you need, you need to handle the media extremely well and, and have that to you. And I think what Eddie's talking about, say a senior coach, for example, mm. he doesn't have everything and you've got to sometimes surround him yep. with what he's not strong at. But I'll ask you guys, what's the number one, if the TV rights are done by Gillen, yep. what do you think is the most or, you know, important thing? Well, in no particular order, yeah. concussion's going to be massive. Looking after... We, there's an area there that needs to be filled, and I don't think it's by the CEO, and that is somebody who's got an expert in government relationships because infrastructure is going to go big it, in Victoria it, for it, Commonwealth Games and Olympic Games, the MCG redevelopment. The AFL don't have any input onto the MCG, Ed, even I've though they fund it. Major events I, and I, government I just, relations. I, I've put together my seven-point yeah, well, wish go. list for Gillan McLaughlin because a lot of stuff was talked about yesterday but no, about what Gillan is going to do before he goes in terms of... Um, CBA, etc., media rights. But these are the things that I need. He needs to fix. Get rid of the floating fixture. It's a it's a legacy of COVID. It favours the broadcasters over the fans. You're going to do a TV deal. Get rid of it. Bring Friday night football back to 7:20 or 7:10 p.m. 7:50 is way too late. Recruit and improve umpires and umpiring standards. One failing. I'm sorry of this administration. Put the right people in place for concussion. And you need to get a joint venture going with the AFLPA and the AFL. More funding for promoting big games in Sydney. This continues to be a bugbear of mine. Not enough money spent on advertising the game in Sydney differently than it is here. It's a big market. We need to have the woman running, a, a woman running AFLW. I know it's Nicole Livingston at the moment. Make her the, an executive on the AFL or promote another woman in. It needs to be a powerful role and the game needs to bring back in some fashion and make its peace with Adam Gould. Well look the first two, floating fixture Friday night football, that's going to be the TV deal. There's uh, small those teams. Do you want to go the other way? You know what I'd say? You can get rid of that uh, graphic now if you like. Come back to us. Thank you. Um, the, the thing <laughs> that I reckon... It's a pretty good graphic actually. Uh -huh. I, I, I agree with a, a lot of that but I'd go the other way. I reckon Gill 
I'd say, mate, bring through some people. Get Andrew Dillon doing some of those things. Get Kylie Rogers doing them. Get Travis Old doing them because that's their portfolio. There's going to be a bit of competitive One tension job. over the next few months. One job, Gil. Nail the TV deal because once you do that, you know how much money you've got to give to the, for junior development, how much to give to women's football, the CBA for the men, and everything else. The game's there never looked one... better. That's got to be, that, Gillen will do that on his ear. Yeah, got, one point, if this was a senior coach yeah. or a champion player and they said, I'm going at the end of the year, we would be talking about, well, the flame's out, go now. No, it's not that. that. No, but that, that's what we would be saying. But so, mate, I'll give you the why big... is it different? I'll tell you why. Because if he does the deal, Gil, that no, I know... I know what I, we want. I know he's going to do it. Mate, that's him. He walks off into the sunset. But clearly, game, at some level, match. he's yeah. looking to the finish line. No, uh, he's Ross, drawn Ross, it. No, no, Ross is making... A, it is highly unusual, but because he's so good at all of those things, yeah. and Richard Goiter wanted him to stay another year, yeah. I yeah. reckon this is a compromise.